Download the free Gun Dealio app to your smartphone. Find out about the latest deals and news on guns and gear. Includes the latest Gun Talk podcast and Gun Talk videos. That's Gun Dealio on the App Store and Google Play. This is Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, now available on iTunes and other podcast clients and on the free Gun Dealio smartphone app for iPhone and Android. Feel free to call Tom now at 1-TOM-TALK-GUN or 866-825-5486 or email Tom at GunTalk.com. Now, once again, here's Tom. Welcome to a special reloaded edition of Gun Talk. When you hear the number, no need to call. Just sit back and enjoy the show, and Tom will be back next week. I say live, but it's not live today because we are doing this on a Thursday at the SHOT Show in Las Vegas, Nevada. You're hearing it on Sunday or some other time. Uh, but we're having a ball here visiting with a whole bunch of our friends. Uh, the Crimson Trace people let us hang out in their booth, and that's kind of cool. And, of course, we're joined right now by our friends Kyle Klaus from uh, Liberty Safe, Gene Skousen. Thank you guys for being here. Glad you're here. Great yeah. to be here. So how's awesome. the show going for you? Uh, it's been awesome. We've had uh, just been very busy introducing a lot of new products. Yeah. And we're also uh, celebrating our 30th anniversary. No kidding. Yeah. 30th. That's yeah. great. 30 years in the business. That is terrific. Well, I mean... In 30 years, you pretty much established a position of, I don't know where you are right now, but I think you are the major player when it comes to gun safes in the country by, yeah. like, a lot. Yeah, we're producing right now 500 safes a day. No. Yeah, 500 safes a day and uh, just uh, distributing it throughout the country. You have 350 dealers nationwide. We're in a lot of the major national uh, accounts right and uh, yeah we'd love to build safes <laughs> you build a lot uh, i just uh, had some more interaction with uh, one of your dealers because we had a i don't know if you know i had a fire at the house uh oh. some months ago and didn't really lose much but we had to gut the whole house and so we had to move a couple safes well you can try to do it yourself or you can be <laughs> smart like tom and call the local liberty safe dealer and say hey i need you to move safes and they come out it's like child's play for these guys. They're so good at it. They've got yeah. the equipment. They, I mean, they, they really do. So you just say, okay, uh, come on in. They, they hook it up. They move it, put it where you want. Now i got to call them and bring it back because we're pretty much back in the house now. Yeah. But it's, uh, talk about real professionals, you know. Yeah. They yeah. really are. Our dealers are uh, highly professional. They're very skilled at, uh, at moving safes, installing safes, and uh, do it with a level of professionalism that uh, we think is unique to the industry of what our dealers offer. Yep, exactly right. And so... One of the things that when people buy a safe, a Liberty safe, from one of your dealers is they, you know, they have different levels, but they can come in and install it, bring it in and drop it exactly where you want it in the house. And moving a safe is not for amateurs. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, that is a very fair statement. We have, uh, we've had customers that think, oh, I'm just going to call my buddies over. We're going to hook it up to a small dolly and move the safe in and get it where we want it. And a day later, they're calling the dealer and saying, I can't do it. Yeah, I can't do this. Exactly right. Get it halfway up the stairs and say, help. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's a bad time to call for help, yeah. I guarantee you. So what's new? You said you got all kind of new things, Jamie. Yeah, we've got some uh, new handgun vaults. Uh, we have a new HDX 350. It is really awesome. It's a fingerprint swipe. You can get into it within one second. Oh. It's got a pull-out drawer. It's got a USB connections on it. Uh, it's just fantastic. It's so been a hot are, seller. So what does USB connection do for you on a gun safe? On, on well, it actually allows you to uh, put in electronics on the inside if you want. You can also charge your phone on the outside. Okay, so you, it plugs into the wall, so you got Correct. power going into AC it. AC adapter. So, so it becomes an outlet for your phone charger and everything else right. just with USB. Plug. Yeah. Well, it's nice to have the handgun vault right next to your nightstand or underneath right. the bed. And with the finger swipe, you can get into a second. Somebody snooping around, you want to get to your handgun. Right. It's awesome. What do you see it as the trend uh, with people understanding the need to keep their guns secured when they're not around? Are you seeing something going on there? Oh, it's it's imperative. We're, we're finding that people are not only wanting to have it secure, especially if they have kids in the home. Right. Uh, the traditional places of in the mattress or in the closet just don't cut it anymore. No, no. And so this is, uh, but the the key point, though, is is they want quick access. Right. 
They don't want to have to worry about fumbling well, with well, the Well, they weren't secure, but they also have to have access to it. Correct. Because otherwise, a self-defense gun doesn't do you any good if you can't get to it. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons why we've done so well with our handgun vaults. These are made in America. We've got uh, three, three models now. There's a slimline one, our HDX250, which is a real popular seller. But this new one is a bigger vault that is... Uh, uh, well received in the marketplace huh. and what we see too is uh we, we see this large segment uh growing in the gun population of the women shooter right and there's a lot of first-time women gun owners and they're very uh uh, uh pro-gun but also pro-security on wanting to lock up their firearms and exactly. keep them secure sure and, and and it's always it seems that the woman in the home is always driving the husband we've got to get these guns locked up well would driving him to do what he should have done in the first place right Correct. I mean, and people say, well, you know, I just tell my kids. No, you can't. I'm sorry. You can't just tell your kids to leave them alone. Right. Kids are kids. and They are curious. This, this is one of those areas that you can't have, like, one mistake. It's, it's a zero-tolerance deal. Mm-hmm. Right. So I always tell people, if you are not in immediate control of it, like, if you're outside of the room, you're not in immediate control of it, mm-hmm. it needs to be secured in a way that kids or anybody else can't get to it. But at the same time, people say, yeah, but I need to be... Not a problem. You can get to it. You know, it's like, what, one second when it's plugged in, maybe two or three seconds if you're running off a of battery power yeah. on a lot of these? It's a second and a half. Yeah. Second and a half. Yep. Okay. Oh, you give a whole half second. That's correct. <laughs> give it some time to warm up. Yeah. Yeah. And they just work great. And you guys have, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say this, but you may have a better biometric system than a lot of people have. We do. Yeah. Our that testing... Works has actually shown that the fail rate on our biometrics is 1 in 100,000, and the average in the industry is about 1 in 3,000. Oh, that's huge. So it's considerably better. It's one of those things where once you get your finger programmed in there, it's very reliable. You can actually store up to 15 different fingerprints. which so you is, can use different fingers, but also different people. Yes, you can use different people. Plus, sometimes people like to program the side of their finger instead of just the face of the finger so that if they're in a hurry and they're reaching under the bed and maybe they don't have the finger exactly the way they want it. So they're actually setting it up for doing it, if you will, incorrectly just to make sure that it will work for them. That is correct. You program the same finger multiple times, just like on your iPhone. You have to you yep. have to program it multiple times. Right. It's a smart thing to do with our biometrics so that whatever angle That's you're at, you, you want that door to open. Would not have thought about that. Yeah, and Jim's just saying in my ear, he says, how about both hands? Yep. Yeah, you want to be able to do your right hand and your left hand because yep. you never know. You may be grabbing a kid, hold on to a kid with one arm you know, running around, and you got to use your left hand to get that safe Correct. open. So, yeah, that's a great point. So you want to program it with fingers from each hand, and if there's more than one person in the house authorized to it, Go ahead and get that the, set up, the too. The 250, you can, you can store 15 fingerprints. The 350, I believe, 30. is 30. 30 oh, wow. fingerprints. So you have access to that. And electronics are really becoming uh, a quick access, very reliable source. Uh, we've found that uh, at least half of our safes now are now put on with electronic locks so that people can type in the number real quick. I had a call recently. A guy was asking me about it, and somebody else actually answered it for us because I didn't know the answer. He said, well, if I get an electronic lock on my Liberty Safe, he says, well, what if we get an EMP pulse out there? We go, I don't know. We looked it up. Sure yep. enough, you guys are good with EMP pulses. Yeah, the lock behind the door right. actually acts as a Faraday cage really? so that it actually protects the electronics <laughs> in that event of an EMP attack. So wow. it's actually one of the things that uh, all the companies who build the electronic locks are looking at in terms of making it protective against uh, EMP attacks. So it's... So they're looking at all these avenues because our world's changing. Yeah, no, and no doubt. And security becomes more and more important for the things that you value most, and guns are at the top of the list. It's one of the top items still stolen in a home burglary. Right. People are looking at it. It's easy cash for those who are, you know, challenged with drugs or whatever right. it might be. Right, Grab the guns and, and go. And having a safe is one of the reliable ways in which you can protect it and yet still have quick access. Tell them about the guarantee. Lifetime warranty. Lifetime warranty. If you if your safe ever goes through an attempted break in or a fire, right. Liberty Safe will replace. Will we will extract the damaged safe, 
and replace it with a new safe, uh, delivery and installation included. So if they come in and put the chisel bars on it and tear it up, mm -hmm. you put the torch to it and everything else, and they're not likely to get in there. Right. Uh, but they basically, they tore up your safe. Yeah. And, and, uh, and in most cases, when that happens, uh, the relocker fires within the safe, meaning that you cannot open the safe. So you need a gunsmith to get we, in. We need, right. you need oh, a gunsmith. Smith. Yep, and we cover the cost of the locksmith to get into your safe so that your items can be uh, taken out. And then we extract that safe and replace it with a brand new one. It, you, know, you don't have to do it often, but I know there have been times when you've had to, whether it's a fire tornado. I remember yep. one, like a safe got picked up and thrown out of a tornado and you guys, yeah, we're good. We got that. We had a we had a presidential go through the California wildfires Ooh. where unfortunately uh, sure. 30 some odd people lost their lives. Right. And he had a presidential 50 opened it up. His photo album that was from the 1890s mm. was still in good condition, and he was so excited to be able to have that protected from the fire. And that's why you want that good fire protection yep. in there. It's so, so important. You know, we've been doing this for 30 years, Tom. Yeah, and got to figure it out. We just, we just have figured out the most important way to secure people's valuables is to do it with a great product. And in fact, this year we're celebrating the 30 years by uh, giving away a safe. Yes, yeah, so we built a custom presidential 50, uh, 30th year anniversary safe. And one lucky winner will win that safe. They can enter on our website at LibertySafe.com or our Facebook page. And uh, we will be drawing the winner in a, in a few months. And Perfect. we'll deliver and install that safe. And it's uh, worth me, 7000 bucks. Yeah. Oh, man, that's great. <laughs> that's perfect. Thanks. Uh, LibertySafe.com? LibertySafe.com. Thank you, guys. All Always right. a pleasure. Thank All right, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back from the SHOT Show. Face it. Sometimes more is better. That's the idea behind the double-stack, full-capacity pistols from Springfield Armory. From the groundbreaking XD to the ergonomic XDM to the latest refinements in the XD Mod 2 series, you can get subcompact, midsize, and full-size pistols in 9, 40, and 45. Carry, target, or tactical models. Fast, accurate, dependable. Don't come up short when it matters. Go full cap. Go Springfield Armory. Springfield-Armory.com. Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. Brownells has gone retro. Check out Brownells' new line of retro AR-15 and AR-style 308 rifles at brownells.com slash retro. Whether you're looking for Eugene Stoner's original 308 design, the famous M16A1, Air Force 601, or the XM-177 carbine, Brownells has the classic, new production, old school rifle of your dreams. Own the firearm you used in basic training, carried in service, or that grandpa always talks about. See more at brownells.com slash retro. Just in time radio broadcast. Rob Latham walks by, say, "Get your rear over here and sit down." <laughs> how you doing, man? Really good. This I can't believe how busy I've been at this show. <laughs> I feel like you sometimes. Well, that's good. You know, they find a, a good horse and they ride it to death. Ride it to death. Kill it. <laughs> that, that's just how how it goes. <laughs> that's that's life. So what you been doing? Oh well, here uh, talking new products and doing demos. I think I did five demos on on Tuesday and. Don't really remember who I am at this point. No, uh, you just you're, you're saying things. You're thinking I don't really know what I'm saying here. I, I hope it's right. I hope I, I didn't I say hope the wrong this makes thing. Makes sense to somebody. As somewhere. long as I remember to say talk about our EDC giveaway thing, I, I always win. Right. That's as right. As long as I throw that in there, everybody's happy. All right. Well, let's get that out of the way. Okay. Yeah. We're uh, doing we're Armory. Doing a great big giveaway. It's called the EDC giveaway, and EDC means everyday carry. We're giving away a hundred nine one one. 380s. Pistols? Pistols. 100 pistols? 100 pistols, and they're, they're packages. It's not you, one guy gets a pistol, one guy gets a box of ammo. It's, right. Everybody gets a pistol. They get a, a, some federal ammo for it. They get a, a, a holster, targets. Uh, there's a knife. I know I'm forgetting something. You guys are nuts. You we're crazy. That. Why do we give everything away? That's why. Aren't you, know, you supposed to be selling things? I thought we we're supposed to be selling things. <laughs> 
I, I keep asking, he says, how are we making any money if we're giving everything we're Volume. Away? You make yeah, it up in the volume. Make it up in volume. We're losing a dollar per unit, but we make it up in volume. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a great old line. Yeah. yeah. Exactly right. So, all right. So, uh, what is this pistol you're giving away? Well, it's, it's our new 380. It's We call it the 911. It's the kind of playing in on the, the, the concept that you are your own first responder. Okay. You know, you're the most likely... You're, you are almost always likely to be the person there when something happens. Well, see, I look at it, I say, well, it's just one letter short of being a 1911. Well, it's funny. <laughs> I, I, I don't know that the, we aren't playing off that. But it is. But it is. It is. It is. It's, it's a single action with a... It, it's a, an al- a, almost 1911. It's an al- Well, it's tiny 11. It's, yeah, yeah, that's tiny what we just call it, the tiny 11, yeah. right? It's very small. It's pocketable. Uh, and uh, ours, ours go to 11. So that's better than ten. You know why? Because one's more. It's one more it's now, one more. isn't it? <laughs> Movie oh references. My God, that's great. See, people following this are going to go like, "What are they talking about?" Yeah. What was it called? Spinal Tap. Spinal Tap. Spinal Tap. That's right. Yeah. Exactly right. That's still a great. That's still. That's a hold up. That movie still holds up. And if you can get through it, because there are a lot of pieces in it that are kind of slow, but man, it's funny. <laughs> well, the, all right. So we've got this little pistol, 380. Mm-hmm. It's kind of an almost 1911-ish. It is. It's got a thumb safety. It's there's no grip safety on it, but it has a thumb safety. It's an ambi thumb safety. It's, uh, I mean, it's tiny. It weighs 12 or 13 ounces unloaded. Uh, you get two, there's two mags. There's a flush fit. I think it holds five, five or six. Or six, six. Yeah, six I think, and then seven maybe. into plus one. And I don't really like little guns, Tom. I'll be honest with you. Uh, my, well, you, got the, you got big hands, you know, man. And I just... I've, I've never been. I've never had a tiny gun that I could shoot really well. You know, some of the DA revolvers I can shoot well in double action or mm-hmm. in single action if I want to bother cocking them, but never really got the kind of accuracy. So I never really, never really fell in love with them the way other people did. But I do appreciate the fact that there are times that's the only gun I can carry. Sure. And now I've got one that uh, that I can actually shoot pretty good too. The triggers on them are there is. They're as good as any of our 1911. No kidding. Oh yeah, I was. That's. I think that element and the fact that that uh, it feels. I mean, it's tiny. I mean, I get it. It's it's two fingers on it, not three fingers on it. But well, it still kind of acts like a 1911. Look, when you, as you go smaller and smaller, you're going to have compromises. There has to be. Yeah, it's just given. All right. Uh, and I know there are people who are still going to say, yeah, but it's a 380. I wouldn't carry a 380. And I, and I want to tell them, come with me to the range. Use the modern ammo, mm-hmm. shoot it into ballistic gelatin, mm-hmm. and every time we do it, we get penetration that is within one inch of nine, nine, millimeter. Of nine millimeter. That's right. Yes, I know it is. It's, it's. I, I'm I'm not about to sit here and say that a nine millimeter and is not more powerful than the than, well, course, than a three eighty. But you know what's, you know what nine millimeter is not more powerful than the three eighty. The one you won't have with you. Right. And the fact is, with the 380, that's the first gun I've ever had that I can shoot well enough to make me happy, mm-hmm. that handles well enough to make me happy, has good enough sights, that I, that I believe I can get whatever job done I need done with a defensive pistol. I can get done with that. That is a 380. And what's the first rule of a gunfight? Have a gun. Have a gun. Yeah. The, the, if you don't have your gun, then you're, then you're really not in a gunfight. You're no. being fought somehow. That's right. But you aren't fighting. Exactly right. And people say, well, yeah, but it's, I get it. And now we have pretty good data on uh, pistol cartridges and stopping power and all of that. Well, first of all, they don't have any stopping power. Right, none of them. They're do. pretty lousy. There's no such uh, thing. And there's really almost statistically no difference between a 45, a 9, and a 380, mm-hmm. and, and a 38. Uh, 357 mag, yeah, that's a whole different world. You well, know, and 44 mags, and you get, get up well, there. Sure, there. I mean, but I'm talking about your carry, basic well, what carry. What can gun. you have? That's right. What, what are you going to have with you? What are you going to actually have when this goes wrong? So that's, yeah. that's kind of, I've and, really and, changed my mind in 380s. And the 911 is not something that you are, are going to be using to take on the hordes of terrorists. This is to get yourself out of a hole. Right. It's, it's probably not the gun for the zombie apocalypse. No. It's probably not that gun. But once again, uh, for me, the gun it replaces was also a little 380. But the reason I didn't like 380s is the, is the one I had before. Uh, wasn't comfortable shoot. I didn't like to shoot it. It was small and compact and light and all those things, but I couldn't hit anything with it. So as often as not, I, I always felt like a, a knife might have been a better tool if you had any experience. But having said that, I recognize that the compromise of not having the gun at all, this is far superior. Oh, Because I can, make, I can make shots within a couple of inches of where I'm aiming at 10 yards, which is almost out of this, that defensive yeah, yeah, area exactly. anyway. Exactly. So, so I'm not... I'm not convinced. I'm, I'm I'm convinced I can make the shots I need to do with the newer ammo. Well, I can I can shoot it accurately, Tom. I don't think it matters too much right. because I can actually hit 
pretty much whatever I need to. Right. Which I guess is why I'm so excited about what I would have told you, you know, a year ago is I hate little guns. Exactly. This thing works for you. Now, I tell you what, let's bounce from a 380 to, let's go to a bigger, more powerful in a 1911 10-millimeter. All right. Oh, the 10-millimeter thing is going nuts. And while I remember the year that the 10s came out, uh, Colt called it a Delta Elite. Does that right. sound right yep. to you? Delta Elite. I'm probably not supposed to say Colt, before, right? Before that, it was the brand 10. <laughs> well, and I, st I have two brand 10s. can check the serial numbers. And oh, one magazine. Uh, okay. I have one Is magazine it? and two guns. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I still have some of the original ammo. It was so hot, oh, so God. violent. Uh, that I sold, I kept the brand tans, I still have them, but the, the Delta Elite, I just didn't like to shoot it. It no. was, it was, and I could shoot a hard kicking gun, but I didn't like it. So how do they shoot? Uh, the six millimeter, or sorry, six, the six inch gun. I want a six millimeter gun. Yeah, six millimeter gun. That's coming next. <laughs> We're going to have a 20, a 24 by 45, 24 <laughs> by 19. Um, the, okay, this, the, you got a six inch slide. On six one. inch slide. It's got a bull barrel on it. It's a heavy gun. It's not a light right, gun because right. weight is what helps the most. Sure. Combat recoil because if you if you consider recoil in units of power factor, okay. you know, two hundred grain bullet going a thousand feet per second makes a two hundred power factor. Force goes both directions. So if you control the weight sure. of the gun by bumping it up, it kicks less. And that gun is easy to shoot. It's crazy accurate. Uh, they're reliable, everything you would want in a gun. It's just too big probably for a carry gun. Yeah. But for somebody who wants a second gun or maybe a primary pistol as a hunter. Or wants to go hunt hogs. Yeah. Oh, that, oh, that would be a would hog gun. Would that be a hog gun? That would be a hog gun, fast shooting, accurate. I mean, I can I can hit an Ipsic target at 100 yards, shot after shot after yes. shot. Yes, and people say, what? No, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You got a good sight, gun... you got a good trigger, yeah. it's, it's accurate, and you got a good round, 100 yards, do it. The gun, the gun shoots that good that... You know, in the past, I would have always said, oh, that's the realm of a, of a single action, a revolver in single action. Right. And a battle is always how do you make a, an auto do the same thing. Right. Well, we're getting you close. You got it. And yeah. for people who say, well, I, I want to carry a three fifty seven for protection in the woods and all, I'm telling you, a 10. Uh, bigger's yeah. better. Bigger is better. Bigger, bigger is better. It's good. All yeah. right. Now sit right there. We're going to come back. We're going to talk in just a minute here. We're talking with Rob Latham from Springfield Armory. He's a, an up-and-coming uh, shooter in the competitive <laughs> world here. It looks fun. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you ought to try this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm Tom Gresham. We're at the Crimson Trace booth at, at the SHOT Show 2018. Be right back. Gun Talk encourages you to support the local sporting goods store, gun stores, ATV dealers, and other local businesses in your area who advertise on this station and Gun Talk. Only together can we protect our rights. You're listening to Washington Times Opinion Page regular contributor, Tom Gresham. Now, back to a reloaded edition of Gun Talk. Oh, we're having a whole bunch of fun here talking with uh, Rob Latham and other folks come. It's kind of fun, Rob. We're sitting here and you're waving and everybody comes by. People walking by. You know, they're making faces at you. Yeah, uh, they're trying to get you to crack. Yeah. And they don't realize we can't crack because we're not serious anyway. That's right. You know, we, you know, if we were serious about something, it would bother uh, us. Oh, that would be a, pro that'd be a problem there. But, but, but that's, we, not, that's not We've happening. already cracked. That's right. That's not how. How would you know? Yeah. Can't, I can't tell anymore. That, that's exactly <laughs> right. So what are you hearing? I mean, obviously you guys got the 10 millimeter. You got a lot of things going on. You got, uh, let's see, the M1A and 6.5 Creedmoor. Mm -hmm. Yep, M1A and Creedmoor. That's actually doing better than I ever thought it would. Huh. Uh, well, you know, because I always think of the as the, the M1A as kind of a traditionalist platform. You right. Know? It's somebody that likes that, likes it because of what it is, and likes it because it's traditional. And it's thing, the package right? of the 308. It's the exactly. whole deal. Exactly. Yeah. So 30762 by 51 NATO, baby, that's what it was designed to be. So the fact that it's crossed over well for somebody that wants to get that extra, because where Creedmoor really comes in it's is a long that, range yeah, it's a long range cartridge. Yeah. Now, does it do great? Yeah, it kicks a little bit less. I think we have to thank uh, whoever, you know, has popularized the ammunition for the popularity of the gun. Right. Because while it's not as, as common as, as 308, you know, any nothing is. It's throughout the world. Um, it's readily available everywhere, and there's well, some cheap and, ammo. And I'm also hearing that in the military, uh, there's a real move to 6.5 for their snipers. They are. Almost any of the platforms that we normally shoot a 308 on, mm -hmm. they're looking for a replacement, and they're dealing with diff They're messing with different cases. You know, 260 okay. is real prominent. Right. Creedmoor is real prominent, but the 6.5 caliber... <laughs> When you run a 129 to 142 grain bullet in that area, gets everything they want 
it, it, plus. It's it all about more. having the uh, higher BC, right. having a, a flatter shooting cartridge, right. but you also have a little less recoil. And while right. people say, well, that's not a big deal. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I mean, t- talk about that because... A lot of people will poo-poo the whole idea of recoil, but it is cumulative, and it makes a difference in your shooting. I don't care what you're shooting. Well, the fact that competition rules, uh, in comp- like Ipsic or something like that, has minimum power levels is testimony to the fact That's that... That's to it, guarantee that, a certain level of recoil. That's right, all that, that is. That's all it is. It's not that we the 45 or 40 is going to knock down target spinner in your 9 millimeter because tar- targets are set up to fall for anything. Right. It's to equate... The, the skill required to control the gun's recoil. So if you take a gun that, that makes, we'll use a number here, a 125 power factor, and shoot it against a gun that makes a 165 power factor, mm-hmm. I'm going to shoot that, I don't care who you are, you're going to shoot that 125 power factor better. You're going to shoot it faster, you're going to shoot it more accurately. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, that's what it's all about. Sure. The, 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 the subtle decrease in recoil for the Creedmoor over the 308 is noticeable. When you shoot it and you're looking through a scope, like say you're prone Mm -hmm. and you're looking through a scope, the gun moves less. Well, and also, if you got to go out and shoot two, three, four thousand rounds practicing, that's right. That's when you really get a payoff. That makes a huge difference. And even in my own training, I tend to shoot probably more light ammo, even no matter what caliber it is. I'll tend to load down nines or 45s or 40, whatever I'm shooting, to get the recoil factor down because it beats me up. And, And the cumulative factor... I've been on a prairie dog shoot where oh. I was shooting a 22 250, and you think, well, that's a light shooting gun. Well, it is until you've cranked out a thousand yeah, rounds. Yeah, until you shot a thousand of them. Thou- okay, and then you're reaching for the 223. Right. Because the 22 250, as light as it is, is actually starting to work on right. it. Right. You'll still feel it, you because you, you, you start predicting that, that, you, that hit. You, you, you will develop a flinch. Absolutely. You, I mean, I don't care who you are, it is a psychological, psychosomatic, right. whatever it is, I physiological you thing. Are. You're going to develop it. Yeah, it's, I don't care how tough you are. It's eventually going to going to build up. So that kicks less. Right. So kick less is good in every in every manner. It, it, I wish we could have magic where we'd have the ballistics of the higher power cartridges with the recoil, and we can manage that with weight of the gun. I, and I, I got a design for us. Laser. No. All right, we're going to have the gun, right? So what we need is equal and opposite reaction. Right. Right? So out of the barrel, we're going to have a pipe that comes up, and it goes back over our shoulder, <laughs> and it's when the bullet goes forward, we're going to have the exhaust, the power, go back behind us, and it's going to equal out. It's going to go over our shoulder, so we'll have a rocket jet going back behind us, and, and the and, gun's and, just going to stay still. And you just gave that to everybody. You know, and in fact, it's going to work so well, you could actually let go of the gun. It's just going to hang there in the air <laughs> and not go anywhere. It's not even going to move. Well, oh, I had, Were I, we not supposed to start drinking yet? I'm sorry. No, drinking started, with, we figured that out a couple hours ago, right? <laughs> well, so all we really need is one going each direction. Yes. So we had a bullet fire in either oh, direction. And the bullets can meet in the barrel. Genius. Uh, Brilliant. You know what? Done. Home this, run. This is this is redneck engineering to the highest degree. <laughs> Nobody can figure this out, stuff out. You know, it's, it's, how many years? Forty. It has taken years? us this long it's to come up us, with this. Taken us sixty or seventy C- years of combined we have, experience. We, we have a, a half of a uh, childhood between <laughs> That's us. Right, between, <laughs> between us, you know the. The, the other thing that we have, and it's funny when we're talking about recoil, we just came out with a fancy version of an AR called uh, uh, the Saint Edge, right. which is a real light barrel because right. everybody asks for light. It's funny. I never want light unless it's a carry gun. I like the But gun. the comp. Well, the compensator does the work the for you. The comp works on these things. Now, you'll know it works when you shoot it because they're so loud, but right. that loud is you can equate that That's loudness. That's directing energy. Exactly. And now the gun doesn't kick. So that... That, that compensated St. Edge rifle, uh, pretty much at 100 yards, if you're not even resting it, just you hold it hold well, it, there. it won't even go off the target. It doesn't move. I've been looking at uh, slow motion video of mm-hmm. it. It just doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. It moves back a little bit, and that's it. And yeah. if you hold on to it well, it's just bang, bang, well, bang, bang, bang. That does two big things. One is it makes it more comfortable to shoot. Oh. But the other is it allows you to shoot much more quickly. Well, and we can make the gun lighter and still make it, you know, because I always use weight in the past sure. to, make it, to make it combat the so recoil. instead of fa- fighting recoil with weight. Fight it with, with, with diverting energy. the energy. Just like the thing you explained a minute ago where they got that pipe coming up. Sure. That's the new comp. You know, I wasn't supposed to talk about it yet. Oh, I see. It's, but, it's, it's, but, it's the over-the-shoulder, uh, it's back, like, backward-firing like, comp. It's like headers. <laughs> it's like headers on exhaust. It's on exactly what it's it exactly is. exactly the same. It comes out in four it, different it, spots. And, what, and once you have one of them, then you're going to have to have quads. Well, we're going both sides. Yeah. Okay. Why wouldn't we go both <laughs> sides? We're going to divert this stuff. It's gonna, people behind us going to be mad. It's going to be so yeah. loud. But You understand they are rolling music on us now because they've heard enough of it. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Oh, oh, mercy. My good friend, Rob Lathan. Thank you so much. Right, Always you. a pleasure. All right. All right. It's time for you to leave. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll be right back with more gun talk. All right. Whether you are a first-timer or seasoned shooter, Double Star has the guns, edged weapons, and parts you desire. Our products are made in America and held to the highest quality standards. No exceptions. Double Star and Ace Limited manufactures products people bet their lives on without hesitation. That awesome responsibility motivates the Double Star family, and it will proudly protect yours. When you're ready for the best, join our family at star15.com. That's star15.com. If you carry a gun, you need training. Your concealed carry class was definitely not training. But time, money, and obligations keep you from spending days at a shooting school. The trusted folks at Gun Talk can help. Concealed Carry One, our DVD featuring the Vata Group, covers what gun, what holster, how to carry, where to wear your gun, and much more. Visit ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Look. This really is life and death. Learn how to stay aware, how to get away, and how to fight if you must. At ShopGunTalk.com, you can get the two DVD set, including Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. No matter what gun you carry, this vital training info can save your life. Learn the draw, the stance, reloading, vital gear from Gun Talk. That's ShopGunTalk.com. ShopGunTalk.com. For 36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org. For tactical equipment for military, law enforcement, and shooting enthusiasts, look for the name Elite Survival Systems, creators of high-quality, intelligently designed products for concealed carry, discreet transport, and rigorous tactical uses. Elite Survival Systems knows there isn't just one method of carry that works for everyone. Elite offers a vast array of concealment products to fit your lifestyle, including holsters, belts, vests, pouches, slings, bags, backpacks, and cases. Find out more at EliteSurvival.com. For more than 70 years, Timney Triggers has been enhancing the shooter's experience. Whether it's a local competition, a day at the range, or even the hunt of a lifetime, setting the standard in aftermarket triggers, Timney is now producing more than 170 models of triggers for bolt-action rifles, shotguns, AR rifles, and semi-automatic rifles. Proudly made in the USA since 1946. Find your new trigger at TimneyTriggers.com. Back with you here again, doing the old hot seat thing. Zach Waterman's joining me. He's, he's literally putting on the headset as we speak. How you doing, partner? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm good. How's the booth? It is actually very busy. Today is a little busier than I'm used to for the third day. It's good. That's interesting. I know. Uh, yeah, because usually by Thursday it's starting to sort of. It's our third day. Yep. And then Friday is kind of dead, generally speaking. True. That's that's exhibitor day where we get to go visit each other. That's show. true. You actually get to leave the booth and go places <laughs> and see things. Cause right now, when I say, well, what have you seen? You're just like, nothing. Right. I've, see, I've seen my booth, right? Yeah, right. Whatever from the, the main entrance to our booth is whatever I've seen. Exactly. I understand. I yeah. understand. So what's new? What's cooking? What's going on? Oh, gosh. This has been a pretty fun year. So last year, we came out with uh, the 22 Nosler was the big uh, caliber, yep. the new cartridge that we came out with in right. the 33. And then uh, we really wanted to spend time, you know, given that cartridge two straight years of solid push into the market. And we've seen some phenomenal things. A lot of OEMs coming on, right. chambering for it. We've added, we've probably got it over a dozen different uh, ammunition offerings for it now. So it's, mm. uh, it's good for three gunning, hunting. Uh, competition shooting, you name it, uh, that cartridge is up for it right now. So pretty exciting stuff. Okay. Yeah. So 22 Nozzer. Yep. But it's been out for a little while. It's been out for a little while. We got some new additions to the RDF line, which uh, stands for Reduced Drag Factor. It's our high ballistic coefficient competition bullet. Okay. Um, we've added the 6.5. 
uh, actually, sorry, the 22 caliber 85 grain RDF, which oh. is, was specifically designed for the 22 nozzler. So it right. really uh, right. gives you those long range. Because it really is about having the BC yep. when you're shooting out there. There, you get very quickly diminishing returns by just going with velocity. Correct. I mean, velocity is good, and you yep. got to have it. But if you have the same bullet and you just push it faster, all it does is slows it down faster. That's right. You, you've got to have the long, sleek, you know, streamlined bullet with a high BC, and that reduces your drift. Yep. As well as your drop. Correct. So if you can get that perfect combination of velocity and ballistic coefficient, you're right. going to have the best or the flattest shooting uh, rifle that you can have. But okay. Like you said, if you're shooting a 300 Ultra Mag with a 110 grain bullet, sure, it's going to start out at 3,500 feet per second, but it's going to slow down. It's going to slow down quick. really fast. Yeah. Because yeah, it's basically a big old flat thing. Yep. Okay. All right. So you got the 22 Nozzer. People know about that. That's been out. You got now. You have some new bullets. Are these bullets going to be available in hand loaded ammo, or is this? Pri uh, I mean, in factory loads, or primarily a hand loading? Uh, a little combination of both. So, uh, like the 2285 is going to be available in factory loaded ammunition from Nozzler. Okay. Uh, we're also going to have uh, some of those are going to be available in component form. So, what we're really excited for is the 65 millimeter 130 grain. So some of the smaller case capacity cartridges, like the 6.5 by 47, maybe even, I don't know about the Grendel, that might be a little heavy for the Grendel, but the Creed Moors, those type of cartridges, it's going to give you that higher velocity like okay. we spoke about, but it's also going to give you that but you still super have BC? high BC. Yeah, because yeah, you always had to go to a heavier bullet to get the higher BC right. traditionally. Right, and now with this bullet, you can go a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. So you get that velocity, but now you have that high BC as well. So that's kind of what we're trying to combine there. And now, are those being made in just target configuration now? Correct. Not hunting bullets yet? That is correct. Okay. Just a, a match or a, a shooting or right. match shooting uh, And, you know, of course, there's a lot of interest in having a better long-range performing bullet in the hunting world as well. And I tell people, well, you know, if you think about it, that's what the Acubine was all about. Yeah. I mean, really, uh, I mean, we have the partition, and the partition's fabulous and still does its thing, but if you want a, uh, a more aerodynamic hunting bullet, yep. the Acubon is where you go. Right, and so with the, when the Acubon was born back in the early 2000s, right. uh, people were looking for a bullet that hit like the partition but flew like the ballistic tip. Okay. So that's where the Acubon came from. And now, uh, a few years a few years ago we came out with the acubon long range, long so range again yes. giving that terminal performance of an acubon but that external performance of a match bullet so right. that super high ballistic coefficient so it's uh as far as like from an engineering and design standpoint the acubon long range is probably our most advanced bullet we've ever made in our no kidding. career yep and yet the traditional bullets like the ballistic tips mm -hmm. still work great i uh, took a ballistic tip you know, ammo out on my mule deer hunt this year. Yep. You know, 308, 165 grain bullet, and all it does is just knock them on their butt. Yeah. It's, it's just, you know, it, you have a deer and then you have venison. Yeah. That's what you got. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's just as simple as that. Groceries. It's just groceries. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So uh, it's funny you say that because, you know, in my position, I'm always trying to do, you know. What's the newest? What's the what's, yeah. yeah. And, I, and whenever I go hunting, it's something I've never used before so I can gain experience. And then, right. And then, you know, I. I a year ago, I took the ballistic tip hunting out on deer hunt and pulled the trigger, and like you said, boom, hunt was over. It's like you like, drop a oh. safe on them. Boom. Huh. So, well, oh, that was easy. That works. <laughs> uh, we'll go that way. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's, of course, uh, I could say it. You may not want to say it, but that's because knowledge doesn't build anything. It's not good. I would 100% agree with that. You know, I mean, wherever you are in the line, it's going to perform. You just have to make sure it's the one you want to perform the job you're looking to do. Yep. Fair and, enough? Uh, absolutely fair enough. And that's why we make basically a bullet for whatever you're going to be using it for, whether it's a, a rock chuck or a whitetail or a moose or a bear or even a law enforcement personal protection. We got we'll, something. With help you. along the way on the website and choosing a bullet. Zach, don't go anywhere. We're going to stay right here, take a quick break, we'll come back. We'll talk a little bit more about what's going on at Nausea, okay? Great. All right, talk with Zach Waterman. We're in the Crimson Trace booth. I'm Tom Gresham. It is Gun Talk from the 2018 SHOT Show. Now 
back to a reloaded edition of Gun Talk. All right, talking guns and hunting and bullets and ammo and everything else from SHOT Show 2018. I'm Tom Gresham. We're in the uh, the booth here talking with Nosler's Zach Waterman. And we're talking about, actually, not going to surprise you, during the break we talk about hunting and guns and stuff. So we'll be actually be releasing a video in just a few days that I did of my deer hunt where I talked about using that uh, ballistic tip. 165 grain ballistic tip in the 308. What a great deer round! It's, I mean, as far as all the bullets that we make to this day, our most popular deer hunting bullet is the ballistic tip. Really? And when you think about it, like you know, being being in the West in Oregon, you know, we think about bear and deer and elk right. and all that right. stuff. But the majority of the hunters in this country are, are shooting white-tailed deer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in the east and the south, and even in the, the north. Right. Um, and it'll work fine on mule deer. And they work uh, great on mule deer. Guarantee. So, when you put it in that perspective, why wouldn't the ballistic tip be the most popular bullet that we yes. make? But yeah, and so, it's and it's an affordable bullet, which and, is the other part of it. Right. Yeah, it's economical and very effective. Yes, it just does what it's supposed to do. Yeah. So what else is going on in Oslo? What are you guys up to? Well, we did come out with a new rifle this year that I'm personally pretty excited about. Okay. In fact, when they put the first prototype together, it was one of those where I kind of bit my, my finger, like, that's going to cost me some money because I'm <laughs> going to have to buy one of those. Um, so last year we came out with a rifle called the Model 48 Long Range, which was a model or a Manners carbon fiber stock with a Schillen stainless steel barrel, like, like super, very, very accurate, very okay. good for long range stuff. And so this year um, we had a lot of people ask us to do a carbon fiber or carbon wrapped version of that rifle. So we teamed up with Proof Research okay. and put a 26 uh, inch match grade stainless steel carbon wrap barrel on a Model 48 action on a Manners carbon wrapped or carbon stock. Right. So this 26 rifle. 26 inch barrel. It's a 26 inch barrel. So it's available in all t- uh, Nosler cartridges like the 26, 28, 30, oh, 33 okay. Nosler. And then of course we had to include the 6.5 Creedmoor and the 300 Win Mag, because it's a pretty traditional uh, long-range cartridge as well. What's it weigh? Do you remember? It's about, it's seven pounds on the nose without a bad. scope. Not no, too, it's, not too bad for yep. a 26-inch barrel. Yep, it's almost a pound lighter than our normal uh, yeah. rifles are, and it balances great. I mean, Man. when we shoot them, so the first, you know, we take them to the, like, the gun's just put together, take down to the tunnel, we do a Fowler shot, and the next three shots are darn near in the same hole. So, yeah, and I, and I know the nozzle cartridges are great and all of that, but I'm just I'm kind of dreaming about a 6.5 Creedmoor in that thing. Yeah. You'd have seriously almost no recoil. No. Uh-uh. And you're getting all the velocity out of that 26-inch barrel. Yep. That would be a package and a half. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so what caliber are you going to? I know you're going to get a nozzle caliber. Which one? <sighs> you know how many times I've thought about this? So... To me, like the 26, the original is still the hot rod. It's yeah. still the fastest. Yep. And when you're when you take it out to the range and you're hitting steel, I mean, it's it's there so fast. And I have a buddy of mine. He's taken his 26 on two elk hunts. Uh, he's taken it to Argentina. I mean, he's I mean, he's it, taken it, everything it's a, with it's it. It's the 6.5 on super hot jalapeno sauce. Yeah. It's just like yeah. Get out of the way. This thing can do anything. Yeah. Like if you took your Creed more and then put another 500 feet per second exactly. on it, that's the 26. But all around, you know, the, the 28 seems to be the most popular for long-range application. Yeah, 7 millimeters, hard, pretty hard to beat. Yeah, I took the 30 out last year on an elk hunt, and it actually dropped the elk at 187 yards. And you, it's it's seldom you see an elk drop it instantly like right. that. So, so is, that, is that rifle out now? Yeah, it okay. sure is. I'm, I'm, uh, it's, it's out right now, and we're taking orders as we speak. So you go to the website, nozzle.com. Yep. Okay, so, you can actually place your order. Right there. You can place it online. Uh, you can get a hold of us directly, either by phone or email, mm-hmm. uh, whatever is most convenient for you. You can even uh, get a hold of one of your local rifle uh, dealers and, get a, and have them order it. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. And obviously, you got Nosler brand ammo, you got Nosler bullets, you've got all sorts of Nosler things going on, and you guys are always developing new stuff. Fun yep. to work with you on all of this. It's been very fun, and one of our, our favorite parts is getting customer feedback because that's where we get a lot of our ideas is from customer demand. So if you guys have any ideas out there, let us know. Perfect. That'll work. Nasser, as I say, I used it on my deer hunt. It worked great. Zach, thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Tom. All right. We'll be right back with more news on new guns from SHOT Show 2018.